in Dannevirk, household refuse is utilized in the municipal composting scheme whereby all waste organic matter is made available for return to the land. Householders cooperate by using two rubbish tins, one for organic waste and the other for old tins, bottles and such like. The truck backs up to one of the heaps to dump the day's collection. This is not specially selected matter, but contains all manner of refuse, hedge and lawn clippings, newspapers and ashes. Hotel and fish shop garbage and waste from the abattoirs is also used. After the material is spread, it's dusted with lime and super to promote bacterial activity, covered with sawdust and finally moistened. It's now left for about six months, when temperatures up to 180 degrees will be generated. The borough foreman takes regular readings of the temperature, the average being about 150 degrees. Each heap is turned twice before it's ready for use. For this purpose, a mechanical grab is used. Bacterial activity is reducing the various types of refuse to common matter. When the temperature of a turned heap is down to about 60 degrees, it's ready for disposal and is put through the pulverizer, which breaks down all large lumps. is then screened and bagged for dispatch. A member of the council with the Dannevirk Borough engineer, Mr. Truman, who originated the scheme, examines the finished product, which has a ready market at five pounds a ton with farmers and vegetable gardeners. The scheme has attracted worldwide interest. Inquiries have been received from as far away as Europe about Dannevirk's effort to utilize city garbage for return to the land, to preserve the fertility on which our health and wealth depend. Judging by the crowd at New Brighton in Christchurch, beach racing is returning to favour as a sport. The Canterbury Car Club is holding an open event on a 5 8 mile course of which competitors have to cover 12 laps. On the short course, the race is more a test of acceleration than maximum speed, particularly as the wet sand almost brings the cars to a standstill on the hairpin bends, especially when drivers turn on the more spectacular slides, which they find is not the fastest way to get round a sharp bend in a hurry. The fastest car all the way is Hector Green's Wolseley Special, a more or less standard car which is developed until it possesses racing car performance and appearance. The Wolseley comes home an easy winner, followed by G. Tutton who takes second place in an MG. In Hamilton, this factory which makes complete plastic dolls not only supplies the local market, but does a large export trade to Australia. The main ingredient of the plastic is finely ground sawdust. Mixed with small quantities of casein glue, lime and formalin, it's placed in an electrically heated dye. Heat and a pressure of 80 pounds to the square inch make the mixture temporarily into a liquid and mold it into shape. An ordinary motor tyre makes an efficient expansion chamber for the hydraulic press. There are more legs here than in a beauty contest. Made in halves, they're later glued together. Lashes are attached direct to the eyeballs, which are made of a finer plastic composition. They are then fitted to a metal rod with a weighted crossbar, which is the secret of the dolls going to sleep when tucked up in bed.
white undercoat shows up imperfections, which are filled with a mixture of talcum powder and varnish. A final sanding, and we have that flawless skin we hear about on the radio. A lacquer spray gives skin color and texture, and a brown spray takes away that bald appearance. Girls paint the features by hand, and the final step is assembling. A strong rubber band attached to the inside of the head and pulled through the body provides a link for the head, torso and limbs. first time, the baby can sit up and take notice. Soon this doll will become alive in the imagination of another happy little girl. <laughs>